when you're gearing, you almost don't even need to have consideration for the street because on the street, you're never gonna overwork an engine, you're never gonna overwork a transmission, you're never gonna run out of RPM. The main thing you wanna look at is when you do hit the highway, what is the average speed that you're comfortable driving and what is the maximum engine RPM that you're comfortable with the engine turning and gear up to the highway speed and the final drive ratio that gets you where you wanna be in the engine speed. The best way to determine is, is to drive the vehicle first, if it's your own vehicle especially. If you're driving down the, the, the highway and you go to accelerate a little bit and it just feels like it's doggy, if it feels like it's heavy, then you're probably under geared. If you have to really work the, the throttle to speed up five miles an hour, you're probably under geared. So, you know, you can go in, downshift, drive around in, in that downshifted gear for a while, see how it feels in that one. If you have a onboard fuel gauge or it's showing your instant mile per gallon or even if it's an average, you can watch if it's going up or down or anything as you click through a uh, lower gear, but feel the difference in the seat of the pads. That's what I do. And then again, just because I'm on the theory of more is more. We've done several different applications of what a lot of people would consider as over gearing. In every single case, they've maintained their uh, fuel mileage increased dramatically their power and output, and it's worked out pretty well. As we share the real-world results of our testing, please note that attempted duplication, even with the exact make, model, generation, and gear ratio, may not yield exactly the same fuel mileage per gallon, but it will result in the declared torque increase. Aside from driver's throttle application affecting fuel mileage, all fuel is not the same. There are plenty of environmental factors affecting fuel mileage, including localized ethanol content, which is less energy dense than pure petrol. The more ethanol in the fuel, the less fuel economy. What about octane level? Does paying premium help? Not in fuel economy. Engines work through compression. Higher compression is necessary in most performance engines to maximize efficiency and power. However, due to the lower levels of air pressure at higher altitudes, lower level octane is often able to properly run the engine. When an engine requires lower levels of octane to fire, less fuel burns, increasing the overall fuel per mile efficiency. Even the seasonal blends of gasoline can affect fuel economy from the raising or lowering of reed vapor pressure to boost weather resistance. Summer blends lower the volatility to reduce evaporation from the fuel system. Winter increases the RVP to permit easier ignition. And finally, we didn't lower the gear ratio to put the pedal to the metal on every launch, but rather for improved highway performance and occasionally some fun. With that in mind, these are the results Tom and Eric achieved. And F-150 was the most recent. We've had that truck for since the day it was born. You know, we've run it through so many different iterations of tire sizes, <laughs> gear ratios. Lifted, lowered. Different states, different highway trips, hauling things. And every time that we've changed the gear in that truck, it's picked up mileage. In addition to the mileage is that uh, it just gets more and more power now. I'll put that thing up against almost anything on the street. And that thing is bone stock other than the gear. 456 for the win. Last time you had, you had 410s in it. So it went from 373 to 410. He picked up mileage there, picked up nice cruisability. But that 456, yeah, made a, made a big difference. When we first got the Mustang as a project. What type of Mustang? 2007 GT, five speed. That car still has eight. Eight speed? This eight, 2008. Is it an eight? It's yes. Oh my God. It just feels, sorry. When we got the 2008 Mustang GT, five speed. See, now I'm ruining this whole thing. The, the 2008 Mustang GT, when we got that, we, we knew we were doing it as a low dollar, but respectable build and update. When we were looking at power on there. We didn't want to spend a lot of money. We didn't want to do supercharger additions. We wanted to make it reliable, but fun for the street. Having a factory 331 gear in that car was not fun. Uh, I think we went 390. 390. In that, that one, which is right around a 20%. I think the actual math is just under 18% change. And when you change that ratio, that's the amount of available torque that you're changing. So if you change from a, say in that case, 331 to 390, you have just under 20% more torque. That's a lot of power. You, you 
bolt on a air intake, you bolt on a, an exhaust, you do a programmer, you might get five or 10% out of all that stuff together. But doing the gear, that's 20%. And that is definitely a noticeable change, both in timers. And it's also seat of the pants, just push the gas. You know you're going a lot faster, you have a lot more power. And not only that, is when you stop and start from a, st a stoplight or a stop sign, it's not as much clutch input. You'll save your clutch. Oh, a lot easier on the clutch. A lot easier on the clutch. And then on the highway, it's the same thing. We talked about you may end up downshifting from fifth to fourth to get past somebody. This thing, you just roll right on the throttle and it picks up without even downshifting. And we were up in the mid 20s on gas mileage. Right? Was like, you were. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was, and I'm like low 20. <laughs> but I didn't lose any. I didn't lose any from, from the first few trips in it and to the last two. I mean, I've been I've been hitting lower 20s. Apparently somebody drives a little more granny-ish than I do. But... Really? <laughs> granny. <laughs> we did this with the uh, 15 uh, Challenger RT. A couple of years ago. A couple of years ago. You can go to Dodge or some of these uh, companies buy a whole rear end that you bolt in. We went from a 309 to a 390 yep. on that. On the highway, it hits 20, 22 to 25 mile per gallon without even thinking. That's even with kind of hot dogging it on the highway. You can run it with and without the MBS um, engaged, which is the cylinder shut down for, for fuel economy. You can accelerate without downshifting. And then you get that on the street with the eight speed automatic. Mm. And that car feels like a monster, you know, with really good traction on there. Streetwise, I think you're probably running up against SRTs and Hellcats. Yep. And you can probably pull them out of the hole while they're sitting and spinning because you're, you're planning it down. But it's 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 fun now. Fun to with that 390 gear. It definitely helped that car too. Yeah, I haven't driven it. No. <laughs> <laughs> you won't let me drive that one. Nope, you won't let me drive that one. My personal opinion on what ratio you should go with is a couple combinations. You know, doing this for years and years, different vehicles, different applications, different ratios we ran it, and it's a what worked best for that vehicle type deal. I still go back to the gear calculator. I still want to know roughly what a RPM range is going to be with vehicles that I'm not so familiar with, you know, especially a car application. The other side is how much percentage. If we go 10% or a 15% increase, that's still within that range that would work pretty well. You just don't take a dart and throw it at the dartboard and go, guess what gear ratio you're gonna go. <laughs> There's so many different gear calculators and things online that you can go through, actually do the math, figure out where you know you want your RPM band and everything on there. Yes, you can over gear it. You can put too much gear into a vehicle. We'll say truck, for instance. You may be running 33 inch tall tires, You've got a certain percentage overdrive, 456s is a good match for that. But what if you went 513s? Oh, that's great. That's great for off-road, but it's not gonna be good for on a highway, especially if it's your highway driver and your weekend warrior. So you have to be smart about how you gear it. Can you overgear? It's possible. Are you going to? Probably not, because you know there's almost no drawback. I am God, we're 456 in the F-150 right now, and that thing is just cranking. It's getting as good, if not better mileage than it did with 373 or 410. Yeah. You're not gonna run out of RPM, you know? No. I think math on that is like, you have to go about 140, 150 miles an hour before you max out on engine RPM. By then you're gonna have, you're gonna be drag limited. So, you know, can you over here? I don't think so. Not, not unless you're an idiot. There's more to this theory, but that's all we have time for today. We hope this video helps clarify some things. If you're interested in seeing more on the subject, or have further questions, let us know in the comments below. If you learned something new, or liked what you saw, tap that like button. And remember to subscribe to be notified about the next fun project in the Rear Wheel Performance Garage.